All right, well, we're back again. This is podcast 1.1, dealing with what is chemistry. After we got a little bit of an introduction there from 1.0, hopefully that helped you get an idea of what we're going to be dealing with. Speaking of what we're dealing with, we're dealing with chemistry. What is chemistry? And one of the problems that we run into with chemistry, as you can maybe see from some of these pictures, is the size that we're dealing with. We're dealing with atoms and molecules that are extremely, extremely small. So small, it's hard to even imagine. Um, so as you can kind of see here, we've got like this gold ring over here. And here's a atomic view of it. We have this cylinder of chlorine gas. Here's an atomic or molecular view of it. This big block of salt. Here's an atomic view of it. And dealing with that can be rather complicated. Uh, and so that's one of the issues a lot of times that we run into with chemistry is, is the dealing with the size of it. And so it brings us to kind of what is chemistry. Uh, maybe you get an idea of chemistry and some other ways that we use the term, like those two people have some really good chemistry together. They're a great couple. Obviously, that's not the type of chemistry we're dealing with here. Um, but it is a study. It is a study of the structure of what? Anybody know? It is the study of matter. Right. It's a study of matter. It's a study of the structure of matter. And that's not it. It's not just about structure, but it's also about its behavior. Alright, so not only do we need to know about its structure, that's when we talk about atoms and molecules and stuff like that, but it's also about its behavior and how it acts or interacts with other matter. And so that's when we study chemical reactions and things like that. So one of the basic things that we need to kind of start off with here is the basic building blocks. And I'm sure you guys have talked about this before in things like biology. Uh, basic building blocks that we're going to kind of be dealing with here at the beginning is the atom. And we use atoms and we can put together uh, molecules and stuff like that. Um, do you want to direct your attention real quick here to this little quote from Bobby Knight? The will to succeed is important, but what's more important is the will to prepare. And that's what I talked about in that introductory video about practice. Chemistry is going to depend upon how much time you put into it. And so I th saw that quote and thought it would be a good thing to pass along there, just to, as a friendly reminder. All right, so in, in studying chemistry, we really almost have to develop uh, our, a whole new language. Now we don't have to develop sentence structure and syntax and all that kind of garbledy gook stuff that you have to deal with in uh, your foreign languages, but there's definitely a lot of vocabulary that is very different than the type of vocabulary that we just use in everyday life. And so we do really need to set up uh, a new vocabulary. And as I mentioned, one of those basic building blocks being the atom, um, one of the ways that we talk about those basic building blocks is dealing with chemical elements. So the elements um, become uh, are our atoms, and they're, they're the different types of atoms, right? Pure substances that cannot be decomposed by ordinary means to other substances. So these are atoms, different types, atoms of different types, right? Those are the chemical elements. Right? And so how we talk about those um, is a form of our language. And uh, you know how we, we view those and how we use those um, can make a big difference in when you're talking to somebody. And so when we're talking about something like, say, sodium, we're dealing with this kind of a metal, nice, soft, shiny silver metal. Here we have a little bit harder metal that's aluminum still in this kind of atomic state or go into something like bromine which is actually a liquid that's easily vaporized and so here we have a molecule of bromine right and so how we talk about these things becomes very important and so it's really almost like learning a whole new language um, they're organized into this nice periodic table of elements 
and this is the the guy the father of modern periodic table Dmitry Mendeleev and he was the one who put it in this order now he didn't know all these elements in fact one of them like technetium right here was missing and actually in his day all of these were missing but because of the way that he organized his periodic table he knew that there had to be something there that they didn't know about so that's kind of an interesting little fact there. So how we talk about the elements and, and how we talk about compounds really forms the language of chemistry. Now this last little bit here for this uh, introductory chemistry video here, going to be dealing with the branches of chemistry and really what we're what I mean by that is the different areas, uh, different areas of study or the different areas that chemistry impacts and so I put together some some pictures of the different areas just to give you a flavor uh, of the different branches of chemistry so the first one we're dealing with is organic chemistry uh, organic chemistry is the chemistry uh, of carbon Right? And a lot of times we think of organic stuff, like organic fruits and vegetables, and if you know anything about that, that essentially means they were grown without chemicals. And so, you know, they, a lot of times you see these little labels that say chemical free. Well, guess what, people? Everything is a chemical. Unless you're talking about energy. Everything is a chemical. Now, whether that chemical is man-made or it's found naturally occurring, that's a whole other story. But everything, you're made of chemicals, um, there's all kinds of chemicals around. So it's kind of false way of advertising when you say it's chemical-free because everything's a chemical. So organic chemistry is the uh, chemistry of carbon. So some things, that typical things you might see, a guy in a chemistry lab dealing with stuff. Um, a lot of times people think organic chemicals are dangerous. Um, not necessarily true. Um, organic certified, right? Certified that they're not using chemicals and the growth of them to keep pests away and stuff like that, pesticides. Um, even fertilizers have to be organic. Um, so that's organ certified organic. A lot of times people think of you know chemical plants and stuff like that when they think about stuff that's or that's organic related. I think they're dangerous, which is not necessarily true. Here's a neat one. This one is a uh, organic molecule, and at each of these little points here, where these straight lines all connect, that's where the carbons are. And so notice that carbon really makes the backbone of this molecule, and that's true about all organic compounds proteins, fats, carbohydrates, sugars, all those things have a carbon backbone in their organic chemistry. A um, couple others, kind of interesting, these are, if you look closely at these two, they are mirror images of each other. And it's these compounds that give these things their color. The flamingos get their pink color from this one, which is a little shellfish that they eat. Uh, this one is a flower that gets its color from kind of the mirror image, so it's kind of interesting how just flipping a molecule around uh, can really make a, a difference in what you see. Oops. There we go, and even the changing of the leaves deals with organic chemistries with chlorophyll and stuff like that uh, that you dealt with in biology. Inorganic chemistry, the inorganic means not organic, which means not carbon, right? And so when you're dealing with organic chemistry, if it's not carbon, then what is it? Everything else, right? Carbon's this little guy right up here, diamond. Did you know that carbon, diamonds are carbon, right? One form of carbon, one allotrope, nice little language term there for you. Uh, and, and I really like this periodic table because it sh kind of shows the elements and a lot of the different uses that they're for. But it's not just the elements that we have to deal with in organic in organic chemistry. Uh, a lot of different salts, not just table salt. And there's a kind of a fun picture of different salts with different colors, um, different areas, you know, uh, fertilizers and things like that are inorganic dealing with water purification, a lot of times inorganic uh, food processes and stuff like that, dealing with inorganic, and a lot of industries use different pro chemical processes in their um, whatever industry they're in. There happens to be electronics, manufacturing, computer chips, silicon, right? Definitely inorganic. 
All right, number three is biochemistry, a combination of biology and chemistry. In fact, a lot of people refer to chemistry as the central science because many of the other sciences depend upon chemistry, and biology is no different. Without chemistry, a lot of the biologic, most biological processes would not occur uh, if the chemistry is off. And so lots of different things going on here. you got neurons being able to pass um, uh, impulses from neuron to neuron, from your brain to your muscles, or from uh, sensory cells to the brain, all done with inorganic chemistry. Uh, real complicated protein kinase ADP, ATP process. You can see calcium in that process there. Definitely inorganic. And I really like this one. Real crazy, some kind of biological molecule thing going on here, and it changes and if you notice right here in the center that change is happening because of the pH well guess what people pH is chemistry physical chemistry who boy that was a tough one in college uh, we called it pchem right physical or physics based chemistry it's a combination of physics and chemistry very difficult dealing with computational chemistry um, modeling lot of math. There's some good calculus for you, and if you can solve this one at this point, I'll give you an A for the year. Not really, but if you can solve that one, I think you'll get an A for the year. Uh, another dealing with energy in the processes of chemical processes. Um, a lot of times people uh, did well at PCHEM. We called them all nerds and geeks, even though all of us were kind of nerdy and geeky, but they are, are even worse. And we had a little phrase that we'd always like to put on our uh, bumper stickers and stuff like that on our cars honk if you passed pkim uh, 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 right because it was a pretty big deal when you were able to pass pkim that was a tough one um last but not least is analytical chemistry uh this one was a fun one because it deals a lot with numbers um not necessarily math but measurement types of numbers being very precise and accurate in your measurements uh, specialized glassware all kinds of instrumentation that we had to use um you know computer aided uh, analysis and all different kinds of stuff that we had to do so that one was kind of fun, and, and that one directly ties in with a very popular TV show, CSI. Uh, whenever they send off the evidence to be analyzed, it's going to some kind of laboratory where these scientists uh, try to determine, you know, what compound is, or do the DNA fingerprinting and all that kind of fun stuff. That's an analytical lab. Um, so hopefully this gave you a little insight into the different branches of chemistry and the different ways that chemistry can be used and, or studied or uh, how it impacts your life. So next we're going to be moving on to measurement and dealing with numbers and things like that. So hopefully you're following, this along, this, uh, following along with these podcasts pretty well and things are going well. If not, make sure you're asking questions. Uh, all right.